course, you're going to run software on top of the hardware. And the software components are as full. So we have ESXi, the hypervisor from VMware, running in each one of the nodes. Okay, This is not your typical ESXi image. This is a heavily modified image by Dell EMC. Um, it's not something you are required to deploy. Each VXA node will come preloaded from the factory. You know, if, if you purchase VXA for the first time or you just purchase new nodes that you are planning to add to your existing environment, in either situation, the nodes will come preloaded with some software in them. This software will be our own image of ESXi that includes uh, specific profile configuration it includes all the services running for vxfail software we have vsan okay if you're going to use a standard cluster as a reminder again this training is more based on a standard cluster configuration in a standard cluster we're going to use vsan so we have vsan software running vsan is not standalone software is part of the the, the ESXi kernel. Uh, so it's just a service that's going to be enabled through a license. Next we have uh, VDS. So um, virtual distributed switch. We use a virtual distributed switch for all our VxFail deployments. vSAN, if you are familiar with that, can definitely be deployed with a standard switch. But uh, a distributed switch is um, is much more interesting in terms of the flexibility of the configuration, the consistency of the configuration, the ease of management, and the many features that you can get access to when you deploy a distributed switch. You have access to a distributed switch regardless of your vSphere license. Okay. Uh, the, the, the VDS is available through the Visa license. It's going to give you access to deploy a VDS, regardless of your vSphere license, whether it's a standard or enterprise or, or whatever. Okay, with uh, with uh, with your visa license, we enable VDS and we use it for deployment. Um, last but not least, we have vCenter. So vCenter here will play the same role as vCenter in any VMware environment. Your central management point for your entire environment. Uh, to which we're going to add the VxFail plugin that I'm going to cover in detail later. So vCenter can be deployed in different designs, and all of them will be uh, discussed soon. So these are the components uh, based on VMware technology. So what I just described is purely based on VMware technology, except ESXi, which is a customized version of, of the hypervisor, but it's it's uh, basically it's still ESXi uh, from VMware. We add to all of that our own software, uh, which is the VxFail software that runs within a VM called the VxFail Manager. So each cluster needs one VxFail Manager VM. There's one per cluster. If you have 10 clusters in your environment, you're going to have 10 VMs. Each one will take care of one of these clusters. The VxFail software runs inside the VxFail Manager VM. It's a, uh, it's a SUSE Linux VM. It runs uh, all sorts of services required for the VxFail software, including the API, the microservices, uh, and so on. Okay. So these are the software components. Hr, excuse me. Yes. I have one question. Sure. Uh, this is uh, on, only depending on VMware technology. I mean, VX Rail. We cannot use it with the uh, other uh, virtual. It's uh, like no. virtual box. No, you can't use that. You can't use Hyper V. You can't use. Uh, it's it's only VMware. May I have why it's using the only VMware? 
it's What's because it's, it's it's actually a solution co-engineered by Dell EMC and VMware. Okay. It's okay. it's a solution built by VMware and Dell EMC. So it doesn't make any sense to run something else like Hyper V or or anything yeah. uh, anything else. Okay. So we don't give you the possibility to to choose a specific provider. Okay. Give you a question. What was the product from which you migrated to VxRail? It's really VMware. Okay, you were just using VMware and then migrated to VMware. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. I th right. I thought that you had you had another product because your question was uh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. But thank uh, you. Only no if, problem. Yeah, to, we know exactly if we need to change the source. Yeah. Well, that you can't use any hypervisor, any other. Okay. Any other questions? Do you guys have any questions about uh, the basic components, hardware and software? Okay, so this is a standard cluster architecture. Uh, it may be slightly different, specifically where vCenter is located. So in this particular environment, we have three nodes and the possibility to add additional nodes. These nodes are connected together using Tor switches. We have out-of-band management switch. The switch for out-of-band management is not redundant. We typically use only one, one gigabit switch. Any one gigabit switch uh, can do just fine. We're connecting IDRX together and this is a customer supplied vCenter server. I will talk about the differences between vCenter servers uh, in a moment. Okay. Speaking of vCenter server, vCenter is mandatory for each VxRail deployment. It acts as a center management point, just like in any VMware environment. And um, you have different options for deploying vCenter. Okay. First of all, with your VxRail package, you get an embedded license for vCenter. When you purchase VxRail, you have an OEM license included with your VxRail purchase. The, v, the OEM license is actually a license for vCenter that can only be used for what's called an embedded or VxRail managed vCenter. Pay attention to the name we give this vCenter. Uh, if you are reading from a very old documentation, you may find that the word embedded, you may find it described as embedded vCenter. Recently, it's more called VxRail Managed vCenter, which is a really like as, as a description of vCenter. So VxRail Managed vCenter is simply a vCenter which is deployed at the moment you deploy the cluster. And it's running within the cluster. Okay. For instance, you want to deploy a four nodes cluster. On day one, you don't have a vCenter, you have nothing. Our software is capable of deploying, automating the deployment of the cluster. And part of the deployment is the deployment of vCenter itself. You don't need a license because the license is uh, bundled with the package purchased couple of things to keep in mind. First, the license cannot be transferred to any external vCenter. That's not possible. If you want to convert this vCenter or VxRail managed vCenter from internal to external, you need a specific license. You need to purchase the license. If you are wondering why would I need to do that, there are use cases where you may need to externalize vCenter or to simply have an external vCenter, okay? Um, second thing is for this specific vCenter, which is the VxRail Managed vCenter, the life cycle management of it is 100% handled by the VxRail software. In other terms, when you are upgrading the cluster, and you are running an embedded vCenter, 
the upgrade of vCenter itself is also part of the upgrade of the entire cluster. You don't do that separately. You don't use VMware tools. If you are experienced with uh, the vSphere environment, uh, you most likely know how to upgrade vCenter using regular VMware procedure. We don't do that in VxRail if you have an embedded vCenter, right? You just run software upgrade. It's going to take care of upgrading not only vCenter, but the hosts and everything. When I say the, when I say the hosts, this means it's going to upgrade the hardware and software components of everything. Okay? So, um, just like any option, you have some advantages and, and uh, I would say some limitations. Okay? The advantages that we just listed are you have a license embedded. You don't need to pay for an additional license. The lifecycle management is included. So you don't need to upgrade it separately from the rest of the cluster. Uh, it gets deployed automatically on day one. There is no additional effort, but it comes with some limitations. So the license cannot be transferred for external vCenter, and this vCenter can only be used to manage VXFA nodes. You are not allowed to use it to manage anything else other than VXFA. Um, does not support vCenter HA. Pay attention here, I'm not talking about vSphere HA. HA is still supported, high availability is available in VxRail, just like any vSphere environment. <laughs> here we are talking about vCenter HA, which is a feature specific to vCenter. Uh, it can be deployed only with a non-customizable <coughs> single sign-on domain called vSphere.local. It supports two options. So a DNS server is a must in a VxFail environment. You must have a DNS server. A DNS can be either internal or external. External, which is the main DNS of your organization. There is an option to use the VxFail manager itself, the VM, as a DNS server. There is simply a service that you can enable at the VxFail manager VM so it can act as a DNS server. This is an ideal solution for customers looking for building a DMZ zone within a VxFail cluster. This option is possible only if you have an embedded vCenter or a VxFail managed vCenter. If you have an external vCenter, you can't enable this feature. It's not really something widely used. I've never had the chance to talk to a customer using this option, but it does exist. And an internal vCenter can be uh, can be actually converted to an external vCenter. So typically, customers will have the internal vCenter and the main, D, uh, uh, sorry, an internal DNS, the main DNS uh, for the organization. Uh, it supports the VxL deployed virtual distributed switch only. There is no option to use an existing virtual distributed switch. And it supports ELM or what's called enhanced linked mode with other VxRail managed vCenter servers. Okay, so this is the first option. This is ideal if you are going to build a single cluster. You are a customer, you want to build a single cluster. This is a good option for you. Or you are going, you are in the journey of building a multi cluster environment. You don't want to invest in multiple vCenter licenses. So, for example, this is going to be your first cluster, okay? The multi-cluster environment. So this is cluster one, okay? You are building cluster two here with three nodes. This is cluster two. I'm just gonna use the existing vCenter for building my cluster two. I can also add cluster three and use, again, the existing vCenter. So this vCenter will act as a center management point for your multi-cluster environment. 